Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you all? Nice to see you. Um, I came in on a tiny bit early. <clears throat> and I'm very allergenic today for some reason. So um, if you're new here and you're watching the replay, you can skip ahead because I'm gonna unbox some fabric just because I got it today. I don't usually do unboxings, but um, I thought it'd be kind of fun, so. <laughs> hey Raquel. Hi Elizabeth. Hey Hannah. Hi Aisha. Uh, if you please kind of place the video camera on the floor and film, demonstrate operating the Juking Industrial Sewing Machine foot pedal, please. Huh? Frank, I feel like you have commented this before. I'm not sure. Um, have we talked about this before? I'm not going to reply unless you reply right now. So, um, cause I want this to be a conversation. Um, hey Shim, hey Delwyn, hey Marin. Um, what are you looking for exactly? It's an industrial machine. So the table is exactly the same from almost all industrials, like most common industrials. So. Um, how are you all? Are you guys excited to sew the Mitchells? Cause I'm, Pretty excited about this and I did a little studying. I got my cheat sheets ready here so that I can try and keep the sewing video going kind of at a good pace. Uh, the um, welt pockets are sewn actually exactly how I do it in the skill building session. Okay, long time ago. So what are you looking for, Frank? Why, why do you need a picture of the foot, or the foot, foot pedal in action? Because it's very, very standard. And there's nothing um, like, I'm not gonna be like, like there's nothing, I don't do anything different. You know what I mean? Hey Amy, and moving the camera is, is so much easier said than done <laughs> because all my cameras are mounted over there. They're not behind me, so. Hey Karen, I'm a very, very accommodating and helpful person, but this is the, I've, you've asked me this before and I'm just always a little bit like, okay, wait. Where are we going with this? Um, all right, so I don't ever usually do unboxings, but I got my fabric that I ordered the other day. I was actually in a Zoom with a bunch of people in the guild. And um, I'm gonna make, I've been compiling all of my, um, my holiday things I'm gonna sew this year. And it's actually quite a list. I made the list yesterday and I was like, holy moly, like, 
I know I can do it all, but I actually have a lot planned for the guild because we're doing a button down sewing sew along. And just for that button down sew along, I think I'm sewing at least three button downs because of the different variations and because I have to film one all the way through. Um, I have to film two all the way through and then I'm gonna film one as we go. Plus I might have a fourth just as practice so I can be nice and concise, you know what I mean? <laughs> Hello, Sally. Hello from California. Hey Beverly, how are you? Hi Sue. All right, so I uh, one of the things I'm gonna make and I almost forgot that I was making is some cozy cardigans for my mom. And I'm also making this a hoodie for my sister. And I think I showed you guys that incredible fabric that I've been waiting for like two and a half years to come up for sale. And it's the, it's um, it's really interesting. It's by Blended Threads and this particular print. So they like design their own prints and then occasionally they sell them or they, can't, they sell them all the time, but they don't sell all of them all the time. So you have to wait for the one that you want to come up. And I, I, um, I, I had to wait like two and a half years. It was nuts. So, um, so I um, finally got it, got a hold of some, and it's like this really incredible gradient of this forest with all these constellations above it. I'm gonna make, a, make her a hoodie, but I need to line it because it's a lot lighter weight than I thought. And when I bought the sweater knit, I thought I'd get some. So let's see what I got, because I'm gonna make the little cardigan, the Lisbon cardigan by um, Itch to Stitch. Oh. And then, ooh, don't press buttons, Sarah me. So, so Guild was mentioned. Guild was mentioned. <laughs> All right, so this is just a white sweater knit. So I'm gonna line her hoodie with this sweater knit. Oh, that's very soft. Oh, these are all very lightweight. Okay, okay. So I got um, this like wine color. I got, this looks very teal on camera, but it's like a forest green. This is all from Style Maker Fabrics, by the way, that Amy Sheridan, I think, recommended. And then I was like, oh boy, I have a lot in my cart. I got a navy blue. All I got was sweater knit, the exact same sweater knit. And then I got a black. And so um, the black and the blue, wait, the black and the um, wine are for me. I'm gonna make me two cardigans. Is that it? And then my mom, I'm gonna make her two cardigans in the navy and the forest green. And then my sister, I'm gonna line her hoodie in white. <laughs> oh, but yes, it is a tangent, absolutely. So, oops. Let's um, move that over there so I don't trip over it. Let's see what we got here. A little fall thing. Oh, this is kind of cool. Their site is honestly really incredible. Um, Oh, look at that, it's a full color. Um, use your words, Sarah Mee. Packing slip. I always did those two for chicken boots. Yeah, the, the Style Maker site is, is really incredible because they the way they organize it, I've always wanted to order from there once I discovered them and that was my first time, so it was really great. Yeah, Aisha. <laughs> Shim, where is that? Oh, okay. Is that, oh, is that button down so long open to all members? Well, it it's part of the skill building session, Sue. So if you're a journeyist or master group member, it is included. Um, or you can buy it separately. So when you're in the guild, go to the left of the screen. And if you're interested in joining a group, click groups. If you're just wanting that skill building session, click skill sessions. And, um, but... If you're interested in pattern matching, I'm probably gonna make a bundle with both. So it'll save a little bit. Enabler you. Hi, Elena. Do you, Beverly, do you have any tips? Like which length have you made? Cause I think I'm gonna make the um, cropped length for my mom. Cause I think that'll be normal length for her. <laughs> she's she's uh, petite. <laughs> and then um, I'll probably make the normal length for me, so. And I, that'll be that'll be short enough. Okay, so let's uh, let's see where are we at. How how far have we been going here? Um, if I hover over record, oh, it doesn't tell me. I guess I could record. Where what's my? It's like I'm like eight minutes in. I just want to kind of like get a gauge of where we're at. So if I do timestamps, I can like start them from a point. So 
Terry for the win. Yeah, she, she's the only one that can post links. Me, her, and uh, Mullen. <laughs> Yours is a cropped Beverly. And is that like really, really short? Or do you feel like her cropped is like actual waist? That's what I'm thinking. It's not actually cropped like bra band length. It's more like, um, you know, natural waist. I think it'll be great for sweaters or for dresses. Yeah, that the peacoat plans for shim are amazing. Amazing. Okay, so we are making the Mitchell trousers this week by Closet Core Patterns. I'm I'm figuring out that this is a bit of a divisive uh, pattern because some people are like no on the big big um, leg full leg. So I, I'm I'm here for it because I was kind of like you know I'm not sure I like this on me, I don't think it's right. And then after I looked, I was like, you know, I think everyone's right. I'm just not used to this full leg and now I'm really liking it. So yeah, that's what I was thinking, Beverly. Ooh, you just you just said all the right things. Thank you. Um, I like the finishing on that as well. I really like bands when they go from the collar down into the front. That one doesn't do that. Um, but the great thing about this is that you won't get cold because those kind, I love the finishing of those, but they can be a little low and then your neck gets cold, you know? <laughs> yeah, we are, right, Alina? <laughs> okay, so um, I'm making view B, but I'm making that little belt you see on view A. See it right there in the corner? Um, and let's look at, oh, here's another, a better picture here. I'm making the one on the right, the view B. And I'm making it in a yarn dyed natural linen I got from Hearts Fabric. So let's do it. So we're first gonna start with the belt and we're gonna assemble just the long belt. We can assemble both. So let's assemble both at the same time. Where did I put that piece? I have all my pieces in my bin here, ready to go. I have a little schematic of just the upper back so I can place the um, welt pocket. I have all my welt pieces sitting here, my back, some Taylor's chalk that I keep forgetting to use, my front pockets, the D rings, um, I'm gonna get grab these right here. And then it goes down into uh, the fronts, the fly, <clears throat> and then the facing. So that's how I've stacked my bin in order of how we're sewing it. I'm gonna use a contrast overlocking thread in orange just for fun since my pocket lining is orange. That's what I was thinking, Beverly, but those ones that like go seamlessly from collar to center front band are so cute, but I just feel like they kind of create a deep V sometimes. <laughs> Heidi, that is me going upstairs, you know? Ooh, Elena, I can't wait to see them. I also can't wait to see your write-up. I think I'm gonna start doing that financial write-up you do. That's what, yeah, Karen, you know what? I was already thinking if I plan my photo, I'm gonna put the camera down really low so I look really tall. I already turned it on. See, I used to only turn my other one on right before the stream because it'll automatically turn off, but this one doesn't, so. All right, let's do it. Let's get this going. So we're gonna pre-iron these little pieces here because we're not really gonna sew them. Um, I mean, you could. You could sew them right sides together, you know, fold right sides together and then turn right side out. Um, but this one has you edge stitch it. So we'll just, we'll just do, we'll just follow the directions. <laughs> Yeah, right, Elena? I think um, I'm kind of shocked they don't have a sew along on their, their website. But I have a feeling that's because they're going to sell one. So they're probably just waiting for that to be done. I'm imagining, you know? Yeah, did you notice, Elena, that the zipper fly is on the opposite side too? I mean, it's okay, like there's nothing wrong with that. 
but it's really weird to look at for me. So the fly opens, the stitching is on the opposite side of like most jeans and stuff. And so when I was writing myself my little cheat sheet, I was like, why are you writing this? This is exactly how you sew every other fly. And it's exactly how they do the ginger jeans. But for some reason, just seeing it on the opposite side was really making me like bend my head around. Hey, Barbara, how's it going? Oh, Beverly, are you sure? You don't have to do that. You're always doing my timestamps. I will definitely take you up on it if you're down. I can try and um, tell you what step we're on if you want, Beverly, so you can do them as you're watching now. You don't have to re-watch it later. She, she actually re-watches it and does them sometimes. It's amazing. So this is what I don't like about pre-ironing it is that I don't have a ruler sitting here to make sure that I'm getting a nice straight line, you know? I should. You know what I could do? Ooh, you know what would be really good? You know what would be really good? Is the, the Hera marker and um, a ruler. If you have a ruler you can iron around, then this is really great. I need a clean one. Do I have a clean ruler? All my rulers, pretty dirty. Let's try this again. Let's just try this idea. Look at this, iron works so good. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, right, Elena? I do not blame you. Hey, Libby. Nice. You can finish, you can finish that one you've been talking about because that's pretty cool. Oops. Let's see, can I, um, See the scoring? Because I only put the interfacing right down the middle because that's the width of my roll. This may not be the best. Yeah, I don't know. That's not going to help me. It's too late. That ship sailed. It might help someone else. I sort of just want to sew these right sides together so I get a nice straight line. Hey, Danny, how's it going? Yeah, <laughs> Beverly, yeah. right? I love, I love that. I sometimes will miss one timestamp when I, when I record a video and then I have to rewatch it, which, you know, I've already lived through watching myself while I edited the video. Um, and yeah, I've really mastered that 1.5 speed while doing timestamps. Let's do this one here. It really is. Yeah, I just got one, Karen. I showed it off a little bit in the cutting video yesterday, kind of gave a tour of how it works. I really should have recorded a video on setting it up, but it's not like I'm an expert setting up irons. I know that that's people who do set them up aren't experts, you know, except the people who are. <laughs> so I always just second guess making that kind of content, but it really was straightforward. and. I kind of chipped away at it because um, I wanted to install this thing. Can you see right here? I bolted this to my table because I don't have a wall. Like if, you're, if your ironing board is close to a wall, you could put a hook, a really sturdy hook on the wall to hold the water bottle because it's got a water bottle hanging up. I didn't have that option. My whole thing has to be in the middle of the room because of the stream. I can see this one right here is not straight because it's ruffly. All right. I keep picturing contrast thread because I'm doing contrast serger, but I'm not. <laughs> Finish the teal cocoa next one. Oh, you did. Oh, nice. Oops. All right, so I should have probably ironed the corner too. And they have this little bulk option where you can like fold the corner like this and then like this. And like, let, let's try that. This one doesn't need it actually, it's these. Let's do that little trick they do. I haven't done that in a long time and it'd be kind of fun. So they have a little trick to reduce the bulk of the corners because we're gonna top stitch this 
shut, you know, like we're not sewing it, you know, right sides together, sewing a long seam and turning it, right? We are gonna edge stitch this. So we can even iron this one more time if we want, just right now, it might be helpful. I'm so excited, I'm kind of like jumping around. I'm trying not to, I'm trying to be grounded and not jump around. And Beverly will thank me for that. <laughs> Oh, wow, I'm really surprised. Oh, the Foxy, yeah, not Fox Love. Yeah, you know, um, there will be more, Libby. It's not, for, there won't be from me, but Maria is, she's actually a better sewist than me. Um, but she will be making some. I gave them all to her. There were only three, don't feel so bad. I, I was really surprised that everything sold out, but I also, um, didn't realize that my website didn't put the inventory in for the accordion. So those are up now. In case you guys missed it, I put a bunch of chicken boots up yesterday <laughs> for those who know about that. I didn't, I forgot to mention it during the stream yesterday. It's been, a, I have to admit, it's been a little emotional doing all that stuff. So I, I, I keep forgetting I'm doing it. Oh, that's smart, Shem. <laughs> yeah, Karen, exactly. Oh my gosh, Terry. I know the little plastic strap on this thing. I'm kind of like, really? All right, so I folded all my corners and then this is their tip. You're gonna fold it along the diagonal, right? 45 degree right there, intersecting those points. And then you can fold it in like this and miter it. See that? Nice little miter. Let's do this one. I'm looking for that intersection. I what I love about this iron is that the steam doesn't come right out there. But you know the um, side of the iron is really hot. I keep grabbing it. Okay, so we have my my miter might overlap there. I feel like this kind of thing, in my opinion, is a little too fussy because when you start getting into this really precision stuff, it means that you uh, might be compromising something else. You know what I mean? Like when we go to fold this right now, will it all line up? That's what I worry about. I'm not sure how much less bulky it is or not. There we go. Let's see, we'll do this one. I kind of line up these folds on top of each other. Hey, Jen, how's it going? You Are you home now? You're not traveling anymore? Oh, right, but you were doing the, the top down center out thing via Zoom, weren't you? You're hiking. You are such a brave soul after that fall you had. I remember just thinking how sore you must be after that. <laughs> what are you working on, Jen? Okay, if, if y'all if y'all don't know, Jen, Jen's J Stern, she is another YouTuber. Highly recommend her. She answers all kinds of questions in her comments too. She is oh like the good kind of YouTuber. You know? You ask a question, she answers it. Oh, get that in there. I don't have this one quite folded as well. You got an accordion, Heidi? Aw, that's right. I hope you enjoy them. I, I was so surprised that I, I thought, you know, maybe I should just do some of this every month, but <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know if I wanna do that. You're going to design a new top. Ooh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's FabFit Fridays tomorrow. That's Jen's Friday day. Um, it's her weekly thing. And that's her live stream too. 
All right, so we're just gonna edge stitch this. And I'm not using a contrast thread for this, so it's gonna blend in pretty good. We're gonna go all the way around these three sides. One, two long and one short. Where's my all? I mean, I, I will admit, anytime you're doing all this ironing pre-fold, really makes the sewing fast, doesn't it? Let's make sure I change the bobbin. I was a little worried there for a second. <laughs> if I was doing this my way, I would have made the um, strap a lot wider. And I, uh, if you're using a thin fabric, if you're using a thin fabric, what I would do is make this six inches wide. And I would uh, fold it um, like this like this, it's not gonna stay like that. Like this, like this, boy, stay. And like this, you'd have no uneven thicknesses throughout the whole thing. It would feel really nice and smooth all the way inside here. If you're doing a really thick fabric though, that's gonna be kind of bulky for those D-rings depending on the kind of D-rings you have and you can just test it out before you commit to that. But that's how I would do it. How'd you know I would do it differently? Did I say something? This is the little belt that goes on the side, Amy. <laughs> nice, Jed. All right, that, that's a very flattering comment for me, because I, I really know what it's like to listen to people I really like, you know, and they're like some voices are different than others. Okay, I should have I should have pressed this a little bit better here. I'm gonna kind of tell it what I want it to do, probably with my all here. Oi, see this right here? You really want this to be a point like that. And then I'm just going to secure it from the right side with a little pin. And then I can handle this one with my awl. Because the awl is queen. <clears throat> you just knew. <laughs> There's lots of ways to get to the same destination and they're all correct. All right, so um, this one, I think we just do the long sides and that's it because we are going to tuck the ends under. I'll go across just so that um, my, my stitching is nice and consistent there. You have to do this long belt first because it's gonna go into the back dart. And we're gonna sew that back dart first because we're about to sew the welt pocket, if you're sewing the welt pocket. They are optional. And I'm gonna try and make them as straightforward as possible for you. Hopefully with from memory, but you know, I've got the instructions pulled up just in case. All right, and so these are the bit that go to the D-rings like that. All right, so we've got our welt pieces. We have our interfacing pieces. This is the welt piece right here. And then we also have this little facing right here. And right now, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna finish like with a zigzag or an overlock thread the long sides of all four of these pieces, all right? <clears throat> and um, I'm gonna use my serger. Do you guys think I'm crazy that I'm gonna do orange thread? I think it'll be kind of fun, you know? Oh, now my wool mat slides because I had to put a vapor barrier under it. So we're just gonna do these long sides. Ooh, 
lightweight wool suiting. That sounds like perfect. I think where I was going wrong initially was that I was gonna use something a little heavy. And I just, I couldn't picture it, you know? Oh, yay, Elaine, I can't wait. I'm gonna look out for them too. You like the orange? Ah, nice. Okay, good. I don't really ever get a chance to use this orange thread, although I have to, I have used it, you know? All right, look, it goes with my pocket. I think it'll be kind of fun. <laughs> All right, let's cut these apart. We're probably gonna go right back to the iron because we're gonna put our interfacing on and we're gonna mark our opening. I saved that for um, doing it in, like in the moment. And we're also gonna do the dart too. I'm just prepping all these pieces here. Okay, so let's put our dart on with our belt. Oh, no, 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 we're not losing pins right now, buddy. Let's move all of you guys right here. Where did this pin come from? That was the other pocket. Okay. So uh, one of the little overachiever things I did yesterday was um, I printed out, I, ma I made a photocopy of the top portion of the pattern just so I could locate this little pocket opening and even put a hole there. So it'd be really easy. Because once you take out these pins, it can be a little bit tricky, you know? Oh, I don't think it can be seen through. It's pretty, um, you know, it's pretty dark, like, it's, it's pretty opaque. Don't make me question things, even though that's what you guys are for. <laughs> All right, let's do our pocket. Attach strap between points. So let's, let's line up this point here and we're doing the size 14 as far as markings go. And you see how on this leg of the dart, there's a two drill holes there. I actually missed that one. So let's put that on the pattern here and we can use, we can use this chalk actually. Cause it'll hopefully show through. I see this one, but I don't see this one and that's probably because of the pin being there. Scroll here. I'm reading the directions, just making sure. I wanted this amount, it's three eighths of an inch that we're gonna poke into this dart area here past that leg. And so I don't know if you could see there is a leg right here. Can you see that chalk there? So this is where we're gonna put our strap, three eighths of an inch past this leg, just like that. And then we're gonna stitch it at a quarter. And you want the, um, I'm pointing this, you want to point the end of the belt toward the center back, just for reference. So this is my, my rise right here. So point the belt that way. All right. And then um, I'm going to do the dart on this side. We're just going to take these pins off here. Oh, I actually wanted to do this on the other side. 
that's okay. And it looks like I just caught that little edge there. Ooh, I'm off. This is always how it works, isn't it? I always fumble a little bit at the beginning of the project. Let me just pull that out though. All right. I don't really care about this pin right here. We just care about this one. My dart right sides together. I'm gonna just get it all lined up before I sew. And then um, I'm gonna just pull this other one away. I've been trying to keep them together because I know it's such a bulky garment. Let's get this lined up. So I'm gonna go to my point here and then I'm gonna straighten out this strap right here. Make sure that this is all kind of laying, you know, perpendicular and I'm not torquing it at all. Um, I'm just doing the 14 because of the height. And I did 14 for the hips. Oh, I looked at yours, Delwyn. It looks really nice. I really like your colors. I heard some people like saying um, that there was like a, this, um, like a lot of people didn't really like the design. So I went to look at it and I was like, this thing is really cool. Like the way you have to like, I think it's like I-cord. Are you weaving all that I-cord and making that? It's very, very cool. Like I would definitely want to see where that is going. You know what I mean? All right, and then you're gonna press the dart toward the center back, right? So then it pushes your belt to the side seam like that. See that? All right, so let's do our other one. This is what we're looking at here, right? I was, I, you know, um, on her Instagram, she has pictures and her, um, it's her same name, um, but I was looking at the hashtag for it and she popped up. It's definitely an exercise in uh, adventure, Karen. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this one to mark. Yep, right there. Point that toward the center back. Put the line of the, um, or the edge of the belt I'm just gonna connect these dots so you can see it. We're gonna put the edge of the belt three eighths of an inch past that leg of the dart there, but stitch it at a quarter of an inch. had to like flip both of my darts over because I did that one wrong. Not wrong, but on the other side. Oh, Shem, I think you would actually pretty much enjoy it. <laughs> I did one of his um, a while back and it was one that was specifically for stash busting. So it was definitely gonna have that crazy factor no matter what, you know what I mean? Just looking for the other side of this. I don't, I don't necessarily think hand tying my darts is that critical here. I, I think in this case, if you wanted to turn around, don't backstitch at the end still, but turn around and then sew your backstitch in the meat of the dart. I think that's good. That's fine on something that's gonna have a welt pocket through it, you know, because the welt pocket is also going to be um, covering up the tip of that dart. All right. 
So now let's press these and we're going to put on our interfacing and I'm trying to decide if I want to draw the pocket on right now, draw the box on. I mean, yeah, let's do that. Well, we could do it over here though too. Yeah, 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 okay. I've met Stephen West a few times, he's nice. I think he even used my clear wristlet for a while. I'm not sure. Yeah, I did, I, that wasn't my idea. My friend Brooke, um, she sent me that tip that she saw. I was like, oh yeah, that's really smart. <laughs> All right, let's press this dart. I love that my iron is always hot now. Like there, there, I know people get really annoyed by auto shut off, but you guys, there's definitely a need for auto shut off because I myself um, had an iron fall off of an ironing board. And because, you know, when you tip it, that turns it on. So it turned it on. This was in my very first apartment ever. It turns it on and then <laughs> it turned itself off, but it did scorch the carpet, but it didn't burn down the complex, right? So there's a, uh, you know, a few things to be said about that. <laughs> this is the center back here. And we have our dart. Maybe do this before you sew your dart, just saying. You might, if you're not live on camera, it also makes it a lot easier. <laughs> just kind of like, my linen is so wishy-wishy, you know? I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get some pins first. And then I think I will use the gray chalk. Oh, Terry, that's so fancy. Love that. That is a pretty amazing tip. I'm lining up my leg of the dart here. Wait, yeah, 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 yeah. that's the side seam. Oh, man, linen just like, it's like rayon. You can really manipulate it how you want, you know? Okay, here's my All right, so you see how all of their markings for the welt have these two circles here? That's gonna be the top of the box. That's the slit at the top. I kinda like that they decluttered all of the markings by doing that. So we're gonna line up those circles to where those pins are. Oh, really? There's like a name for that? That's pretty neat. Okay, there's one. Let's do the other one. put it right side up to iron the dart. I like being able to see it, you know? I know it probably, 
in some respects, it's good to iron the dart from the wrong side, but I like to lift it up so I can push that seam, you know? I hope I got my belt at the right angle, you know? <laughs> bias cut dart thing. I don't know what that is. Oh yeah, if you sew it off, that will, um, if you sew off the end, yeah, that will actually lock the stitches, but it's also kind of dangerous for your machine. Some machines are really sensitive when you do things like that, you know? So you gotta be really careful. Like I've had some machines that are just instantly gonna jam if I sew off the edge. My industrial is pretty lenient with me. Um, and that's because like sometimes I'll, I'll like, just like my toe will pull up, like my toe will be under the foot pedal and it'll go bam like that and it'll make my machine go. <laughs> it's very scary. Let's see, is this the same height from the top there? It is, okay. It just looks, doesn't it look kind of whooshy? <laughs> Let's make it look visually more correct. <laughs> oh man, I lost that pin. <laughs> Let's uh, contrive this to look better. To just reassure ourselves. like that. Hey Ray, how's it going? Oh, the extra fabric. Oh, I think she, what she's talking about is, um, do you do this, something like this, Terry, where you put a piece of fabric on this side of the dart? So then when she's pressing the dart on the right side, the bulk of the dart on this side is countered by some bulk over here. Is that what it is, Terry? Oh, Jen, do you sew your darts from, um, she, she might be gone. That's a, that's a strategy. It's called a balanced dart. What are the advantages? I think Terry's just a try hard, to be honest. <laughs> That's my personal opinion. <laughs> oh, but you sew it in. Oh, very cool. I think one of you needs to do a featured post on it. <laughs> All right. My microphone is kind of not good today. Let's move it up higher. All right. Back to the machine. So I'm gonna admit, like I am, I'm not trying to draw out this process. I'm just gonna be very methodical because I think it helps people. Um, I know that if the camera wasn't on, I'd be a little bit more cavalier. Tiny tip. Yeah, it evens out the lump. It makes for a smooth dart. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's put this. I'll just get rid of this dart here. This is kind of thick though. and it's sewn in a weird angle too. But we can kind of get our pant to look a little bit more size-wise to this. Like this we have here and we have 
here and let's see how good that is with the paper. Ooh, that is like pretty spot on right there. But we want it on the other side. Why am I fussing around with this for? <laughs> We're gonna mark the interfacing on the right side like that, okay? That's just the interfacing so we know about where it's at because we really need this box to be inside that interfacing, right? So let's mark the box on our, um, I, I know I should have practiced this just so I didn't make it look so clunky. There's so many ways to go about it and I start trying to do all of them at once. Wait, let's move all this out of the way here. All right, I want you to get your little piece here and we're gonna mark this box onto the, um, this little facing, the welt here, right? <clears throat> and so usually when I make these, I actually cut this box out so that I can just trace inside of it. If you don't wanna do that though, what you can do is fold your paper, just fold it around the box. Get a nice crease going around it. Like this. And then we can just trace around it. And we wanna do it on the wrong side because we're gonna sew this right sides together to the pant, all right? So we're gonna put this down like this. It's a little smaller now because it got uh, shrunk from the interfacing a little bit. And then we're gonna draw this box on here. Now, um, in videos, I actually just use re um, removable marker or washable marker. No one's gonna see this, so you can do that too if you want. See, and I just go around the whole thing like this. All right, so there's one box, just like that. Let's do the other one. <laughs> yeah, many of us sewists are tryhards, aren't we? <laughs> I'm definitely one of those <laughs> sometimes. And then other times I know I'm really horrifying with how cav cavalier I am. The other thing you can do if you don't wanna do this fussing with the paper is just measure the box. It's probably a half inch by, I'm gonna say five or five inches or five and a half. It's half inch by four and three quarters, right? Cause look at this, looks a little wonky right now. And we could actually just draw it on here and make sure, because what you're really going for, this is like one of the one times I'm gonna tell you be precise because it's gonna pay off, right? So let's try and get this also parallel here and then we'll do another one here like this and then you want perpendicular lines at the end and we'll do an arrow like that to that line and let's just double check this one let's make sure we get a half inch there like that okay and now Let's see, we're gonna um, let me make sure I do it the way they say to, say to do it. Where is it? Facing to pocket. So get your facing, we'll put our facing to the pocket. Move this out of the way and move you out of the way and you out of the way. All right, get your pocket lining. And let me find where those notches are. They're down here, all right. Okay, so the way that this pocket is sewn, when you're in, your trousers are inside out, you're gonna see the right side of your pocket lining. Um, the right side is not gonna show to the inside of the pocket, it's gonna show to the inside of your trousers. And so that's how I'm gonna sew them too. <laughs> so um, we're gonna put the, um, facing to the wrong side of this lining. I'm, I can't find my spot. Where is it? Oh yeah, yeah, here there it is. Okay, just making sure I know where I'm at, okay. All right, and so on this pocket piece, there are some notches down here, and this little facing fits between those notches like that, all right? 
Hey, Donna. All right, so just put it between those notches and we're just gonna stitch it down. I'm having to stretch it a tiny bit because the overlock kind of pu pulled it in a little bit. And I also unthreaded my needle. <laughs> of course, right? You're not too late though. We're just getting into the welt pocket sewing. Oh, there you go. Balanced dart, that's what it's called. Cool, I might check that out later too. I love seeing stuff like that. All right, and then we're gonna go down the other side. I'm just gonna keep my needle in, <clears throat> why not? Pull this a little bit. So this is the little part that you're gonna see like when um, someone looks at your welt pocket and maybe there's a little gap in your pocket opening, they would see this behind it, not your pocket lining. That's what this is, it's just a little facing. It's so actually a really tiny facing too. I kept mistaking that piece over there <laughs> for it. But it's really all you need. It's not a very big pocket opening. Plus we're covering it with a welt. All right, so now we have that. And then so when this is gonna go against the pant and so then this is gonna come up here and then when you're wearing the pant and you see inside there, you'd see the little facing, all right? Okay, so let's um, get a pant out here. And let's try and find the general place where this box is gonna go. I'm gonna just mark it like a little bit here. We're not sewing from this side, we're sewing from the right side, so it doesn't really have to be spot on, right? We'll put it right over this interfacing here on the back, see that? And the top edge of that box, remember how I was telling you about the circles? See how they're all like lining up now? It's that top line, top cut line. I'm about to pin that um, belt away. I'm gonna just fold this down like right there. and then line it up like that. See? All right, put that up there. And then we're gonna pin around it. Don't, don't pin like too close to it. We need the machine to go all the way around that box, okay? I am very focused. <laughs> oh, thanks guys. <laughs> all right, so the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check to see this, I'm gonna like just pin this box like this, put little four pins in the corners, right? Now let's make sure we're really in that um, interfacing. I feel like it's a little low. I'm gonna flip it over. And we're gonna put this guy right on top of those pin marks, right? Lining up those boxes. And now same thing, pin this down. Some people will baste, just pin around it. I think that uh, there's a lot of things that people really get uncomfortable with the sewing these. Um, and I get it because you're really worried you're not gonna get that box stacked all the way up through perfectly. At the end of the day though, I think the most important thing is that your pockets look similar to one another when you're looking at the pant. So if we miss that interfacing underneath, it is not the end of the world. The pocket line is gonna cover all that up, right? 
Um, and your pocket lining too has a little bit of wiggle room. I, I'm just saying worst case scenario, just to comfort yourself to be like, all right, what can go wrong here? All we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna sew this a, a rectangle around this. We don't have to like aim for the welt or anything like that because this is the welt and we're gonna fold it up. It's like the easiest way to do a welt, all right? So all we're gonna do is sew a rectangle right now. We want that rectangle to be really nice. And so if you're looking for anything to focus on, making sure your left and right pants are symmetrical is the, the best thing to kind of focus on. So if you get this one a little off, make the other one like this one, you know? All right. All right, and then when I do these, these boxes, I lower my stitch length, and then I never start in the corner of the box. I always start along one long side. All right, and so we're just gonna sew around the box. And we're gonna make sure that we pivot at the corner. We're going for a, you know, a rectangle too, not, not a parallelogram. <laughs> I mean, we like parallelograms. We're not against them or anything, but today they are not welcome here. All right, and we get to the beginning there. And so now we have our box, all right? And let's see how it looks on this side. Let's see. Look at that, we're pretty good on the um, interfacing there. See that? There's the box sewn on there. Let's see how this side is. I feel like one's gonna be off. So that's not too bad. All right. Okay, we can take these pins out that held our lining there. Just so you don't forget them in there. You don't want it to leave it in there. All right. So do you wanna go one whole pocket through and then we'll do the other one? All right, so now we're gonna cut this. And so just cut in the middle of your box this is gonna make you all nervous, I know, but. <laughs> and then um, we're gonna cut those double Y formations that we see, right? I'm gonna flip it over so we can see a little better. Make sure you're not cutting anything else either. And we go right up into those corners. So when I do the kind of like what I call the fake welt, which is the one you see a lot on jackets, like the, the Auburn blazer, the Tamarack, um, I call it fake just because it's not, I'm not trying to degrade it at all. Like it's an amazing pocket. I'm just saying you're actually not sewing in the, the welt the same way. When you do that kind, you don't really actually wanna get all the way to the corner. You wanna do like one stitch behind there. I have spat, um, spare fabric. Why, did I do something wrong? <laughs> Making me nervous, Karen. I have a little bit. <laughs> um, all right, and now um, let's do a little ironing here. We'll just kind of pre-iron this little opening here to make turning it a little bit easier. Because right now we have the benefit of being on this side. So, we're only with this fabric here. So this is what I'm about to do. I'm about to pin this puppy out of the way because it is driving me nuts. Just like this. Just pin this guy out of the way. Cause this is really heavy compared to the weight of my pants, you know? You're nervous for me? <laughs> I've sewn a lot of welts. <laughs> If there's one thing I'm good at, Karen, is backup plans. <laughs> All right, and now we're gonna poke it through the hole. Boop. What makes me nervous is trusting someone else's pattern on these kinds of things that I know how to do. Like, you get your favorite way to do it, you know? And it's not like theirs is wrong. It's just that like, you just get your favorite way to do something, you know? The way you know you can pull it off. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna iron the seam a little bit. Let's even press it open just briefly. 
I'm not used to this iron. It's such a different point. All right. And so this looks pretty good so far. Like we got a nice, you know, shape rectangle, right? So let's tug on our, our pant fabric here and get this little edge right on the edge. That's why I pressed the seam open just briefly. This iron's so chonky. All right, and let's do this one here. Press the seam open. And then pull it back. And you know, pull your rectangle so that it resembles a rectangle, right? Don't don't let it control the shape. So look at look at how my pocket here is a little bit wider and this is a little bit off there. So I was a little off going this way, but that's gonna be okay. We have a quite a bit of steam allowance here on the sides. It'll all get caught in there. Nice, Jessica, that's awesome. Hi Noemi. You can't confuse them trying to follow a different way because actually carrying on. Yeah. Oh, exactly, Ray. All right, let's look at on this side. Looking good. Oh, bound buttonholes, yeah. Yeah, and see how my dart is really strong. It wants to push down on it. That looks, that looks really nice. Linen is so <laughs> malleable. <laughs> All right, let's see where we're at now. Uh, this one here. Just box on right side. Press top welt, cut opening, turn welt and iron. We're already on step nine. Press lower box, seam open. Oh, we're on 10. Yeah, okay. We're almost done. Oh no, Amy. Do you think you'll make them an again? Oh yeah, that's a, that's a pretty chunky one, Aisha. <laughs> Was it like polar fleece? All right, so now we're gonna accordion this up like this, right? So this is the little welt that you're gonna see on the other side, you know, that little strip of fabric that shows through the opening, you know? Um, and so when I do these, I, this is when I, my cavalier attitude really does not pay off, right? So <laughs> sometimes it might be good to mark a line on this fabric so you get a nice parallel <laughs> fold because I think we all know Sarah well enough to know she can be a little bit cavalier with these kinds of things. So let's, let's make a half inch line here. I kind of want to do this with my, um, my Hera marker, but I think I left it over here. Is that what that is? Oh, that is, that's, that's a light right there. Oh, here it is, here it is. Let's see if I can just mark a score line there, right? And then fold it along that. And we're gonna iron that too. Let me make this look less awkward. So basically what you're doing is folding this up to the top of your opening. And you just wanna make sure it's parallel because you don't want one side to be higher than the other. Oh, you're <laughs> Yeah, totally, Shim. I think that that works great, you know? All right, so let's mark this again. It'd almost be better to mark it on this side because um, I'm scoring it the other way, you know? So let's go back over here. But I can see the score, which is really helpful. Another way to check is making sure that the fabric that you have left over right here is parallel as well. And 
Okay. I'll pull this because that surging is going whoop. Do I have a pin here? I have one pin. Just one pin. Let's see how it looks. There we go. I think I wanna press the seam open again, right here. Yeah, we want that to stay down, I think. It'll look nicer in the corners. See this right here and then fold it over like that. And now let's see what it looks like from this side. I like this corner better over here, but that looks pretty good. Okay. We're just about done with one. <laughs> um, here, wait, let me change my little visual here. There's so many steps on their instructions for doing this. Um, they really walk you through it. Okay, so uh, one of the things you can do is secure this right here by stitching in the ditch. So sometimes, like this would be your opportunity also if you wanted any top stitching around your welt, you know, like going all the way around before your pocket is sewn. You cannot add top stitching once your pocket is finished, right? Just like the pocket lining the bag. So if you want any top stitching right now, like in, like say you were doing something um, like a fabric that really begs to be top stitched, you know, like a denim or something, now is your time to, to do that and you can go all the way around the, the pocket. Um, what they recommend is doing a stitch in the ditch right here and I think that's what I'm gonna do just to do what they're recommending, you know, right? So I'm gonna stitch in the ditch on the bottom part and stitch in the ditch means that I'm stitching in the ditch of my seam there. And um, I'm gonna pull it here. I can pull the camera down too. This camera, oh, okay. I see what's going on here. Here we go, sorry. That solves so many things. <laughs> Why it was doing that. So you see how there's a seam right here? I'm stitching in that seam. This is kind of a hard seam to take out, you know, like if you get it wrong. <laughs> you can take it out on the other side though. You can't you just can't take it out from this side. Did I backstitch there? I hope I backstitched. I actually defined my corner right there really nicely. And so it's, this is what it looks like. So this is the little seam that I just did right there. Let's cut that. Um, and then that is, I'm almost done here. Let me flip this over. Fold pan out of way and stitch welt to lining. I did that, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, pretty sure. All right, so now we're gonna secure these little ends here. Well, let's do it from this side. No, 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 we're gonna do it from this side. All right, so these little ends right here, the little corners, and so we're just gonna we're just gonna stitch only in the the like. The welt itself. We're not really stitching on the pant at all. This stitch is not going to show on the right side. And this is a way for you to kind of secure these little triangle ends here. And it, it is also a shaping opportunity. If your triangle can be manipulated to be, I mean, your rectangle can be a, like rec, uh, manipulated to be more square, you know, or less angular. If you had an angular thing happen, this is your opportunity to do that by kind of you know, taking this little triangle and giving it a good tug or, you know, taking the a corner and maybe pulling it just gently down. You can probably make a, a good enough impact to kind of write any 
weird angle things without having to take anything out. So I'm just gonna stitch across the ends here. And I don't want this to show on the right side. Just like that. We'll do this side now too. And so I'm doing this from the right side of the pant, but I just pick up the pant like this and the pocket lining like this. And also don't pull this so much that you distort your um, pocket opening either. I've done that many times. I'm a puller. That was a little close to the seam there. There we go. Nothing can be seen there. And then I think now um, stitch, pull the pant out of the way and stitch pocket to, to welt to lining. I did that, right? Oh, 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 this, oh yeah. The bottom of your welt right here. So now we're just gonna secure this welt, this little flappy flap here to your pocket lining. So we're just gonna pull everything out of the way. You only wanna be stitching on the pocket lining and this welt here. And you can see mine's a little wonky. I can't overcorrect for that amount, but I can at least kind of give this a little tug and kind of um, try and straighten it a little bit. But I'm pretty much locked in now that that's, that ship has sailed. Oh, let's change my stitch length back to my regular one. All right, and then now we're gonna finish our, our pocket sides. Okay, uh, let's see how she does this. Fold the lining, finish the sides, secure top of welt folding, pant away. So I was wondering why we couldn't secure the top of the welt now before we sew the sides. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did, but on the upper welt here, right here. This feels a little chunkier, like it feels like you're stitching through things you shouldn't be stitching through. And I think that's because the, the seam allowance is pressed up of the um, welt, right? All right, and so now this is it. This is the end. Let me show you. So when we pull this lining up to meet the waist and this, and this lining as well, right? When these are pulled up, your little pocket facing that we stitched a long time ago, that should be centered over the pocket opening right there, right? So here, this right here, when it's pulled up to the waist, should sit right over that, just like that. All right, and then now you can do this however you want. Um, oh, I am such a tryhard on these sometimes that I will actually sew these right sides together like this. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sew mine right sides together. It's a little awkward. But this way, um, I, I don't have to have overlock on the edges of my pocket lining. So I'm just folding them right sides together. And the, the term right is actually kind of relative because, and I just mean the right side of my print. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one. You have to turn this one first. And this one's gonna be a little harder. Pretty sure, Can, is, this one, is this one possible? This one is possible, right? Yeah, it's just a little harder. But it's possible. Because I'm kind of putting my whole pocket in there, or my pant in there. So if you're doing something kind of bulky you might have a little bit of trouble, but you just need to be able to sew for a couple inches, right? You just need to manage a couple inches. I'm doing a, a small seam, a quarter inch. Hey, Michelle, how's it going? I am French seaming it. <laughs> I am basically doing kind of a French seam just to enclose it. But um, my last pass of the French seam is gonna be, um, I'm not gonna be making sure I enclose this because no one's gonna see it, right? Only the hand is gonna see it. All right, and so now let's turn this right side out. Right, put our hand in the pocket. Turn out our corner. All right. There we go. 
All right, so let's iron that and then we'll edge stitch it. You'll see where yourself at. <laughs> yeah, I like this to be clean too. This is one of those areas I do like to be clean. But I don't like it being poofy like this, so that's why I'm gonna do one more stitch to enclose that. That's why you have to do kind of a narrow seam allowance because you don't you don't have much space left on the edge of the on the side of the pocket here. All right, so how did all of that feel to you guys? Do you have any suggestions on when I do my next one as far as like how I explain it or how I do it besides just do it better <laughs> and not so clunky. I'm really glad they do this the same as mine because it was easier to memorize. <laughs> I didn't really have to memorize as bad as much. They just spelled out certain steps that I just always did without thinking. And um, I was like, wait, what is that? And then I was like, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that, I know that. <laughs> Looks good. I think that this back facing piece honestly could be a lot wider because look at how close you are. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. They tell you now to do your button and buttonhole on here. And I really think you should do that a little, like one step before. Let's see if we can figure out a better step to do that because um, I do think that that's a little bit late. Um, all right, and then we're also gonna secure our pocket right here so that when you reach your hand in your pocket, you can't go up like this and it'll make your pocket more stable, right? It won't be like this loosey goosey hole like it is right now. So we're gonna sew across it. I'm just gonna fold it down like this and we're just gonna sew in the meat of this, not on the pant. And even if you just do it right here at the pocket, that's gonna be really helpful. Don't distort your opening like this. And see now how much more secure that is, like that. All right, and then let's just enclose our seam here. And, that, and this is why I don't, I say it's not a true French seam is that I'm not making sure that raw edge isn't showing. Like it probably is on the inside of the pocket. Let's let's take a peek. I'm always honest. See, there's some raw edge right there, but no one's ever gonna see that because it's on the inside of the pocket. You know what I mean? The, um, um, do you mean the size of the pocket, Sandra? Is which part part of the instructions? The only thing I did different is I enclosed my side seams of my pocket lining. What they have you do is um, just overlock these edges. That's the only thing I did differently from their instructions. And do you, are you talking about the pocket, Sandra? Because I, I can check the pocket size. The pocket size is not huge. It is a gigantic piece, I totally agree with you. And I think it's because these are so high-waisted that when you put the pocket in the correct position on the body, there's just all, like, I mean, look at that, how much fabric is above the um, pocket. You know what I mean? I think that's probably what it is. Because normally, you know, if, you were, if this was like a pair of chinos, there'd be a waistband right here, right? So these are already high-waisted, so there's a 5 8 inch seam plus the waistband. This would normally be like right here. I think that's why. Closing off the top pocket. Yeah, that's in the instructions. You should do that. Yeah, exactly, Terry. I agree with that. Yeah, Michelle, that's how it was always taught to me too, but I never do it that way. All right, well, should we do the other one? Did I just drop on my whole pocket? I'm not gonna do a button and buttonhole. I would never use that. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, that does help not show the spacing up there, but you know, like, look, there it is right there, you know? That's deep enough. What's this thread nonsense right here? Get rid of that. <laughs> it looks good. It looks really good. I'm, I'm actually really pleased with it. These fabrics were kind of perfect for this, I have to admit. All right, let's do our other one. 
Where are we at with this one? <laughs> I feel like it's so far long ago. All right, let's uh, pin the waistband here out of the way because this thing is kind of heavy, you know? I'm just gonna clip it maybe like this and clip this to itself like that so that I don't pin anything. All right, so let's start over at the beginning. <laughs> All right, we, we finished our edges. We did our facing to the pocket. We wanna do the welt to the pant, right sides together. All right, so now we just need to mark where this is on the pant and then line up our lining and then we're good to go. All right, so let's put the, I'm just gonna mark the corners of the interfacing on the right side. That way I know where I'm at, you know, like this. Oh, 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 we could actually, let's mark it on this piece too. So this is gonna be right sides together. I don't know, Karen. I feel like that's when I get like, well, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's when I get a little cocky. <laughs> Okay, there's, there's my mark right there. And I kind of like just using the chalk to kind of give me a general placement for this. If I'd practiced this a few times, then I would have like a, this is the best way to mark it and the easiest and the least fussy and the most accurate, but I didn't do that, sorry. Yeah, you, yeah, a lot of people do that, Raquel. Uh, yeah, if you wanna baste it, absolutely baste it. I do think that that helps you keep that kind of shape. All right, so we're gonna center this over our interfacing piece here, right? And then we're gonna pin kind of around it like this, just so that it's out of, the pins are out of your way when you're sewing, all right? And then now we're gonna take these pins and we'll mark the corners of this box here. Yeah, exactly, all the help possible. All right, and so then now, we've already marked this box here. I'm just gonna put this away, and you away. And remember, it's the um, narrower side goes at the top, and we're just gonna center this on there. Like that. Like that, and then again, I'm gonna just pin around it and remove those other pins. Cause there's there's definitely a more efficient way to do all this marking, pinning, backing and forthing, <laughs> you know? If you have my skill building session about pockets, I have a bunch of welt pockets in there and I um, think they turned out really good. The instructions, the pattern piece, you get pattern pieces, all of it. There's like, I don't know how many pockets are in that thing. It's in the, uh, it's in the part two one. All right. Now we're going to sew around our square and we're going to drop down our stitch length again. Remember I always start in the straight sections. Don't start in the corner because you don't want to back stitch there. Hey Chantelle, how's it going? Welcome in. Be decisive about your corners. I wanna to go to that bottom line. Get rid 
through all these pins here. And meet your spot where you started and then put your stitch length back up. Nice. Oh, I'm so glad you guys like it. That was a fun one to do. Ooh, Terry. Serious mod here. <laughs> okay, uh, now we cut, right? Now we cut. And I just get it going with my scissors. This can be any shape you want, but we always see it's wise, right? Because we need the, um, and it'll go into the corners. The fact that my thread is gray and the chalk is gray just makes me kind of nervous that I'm um, cutting through my thread and not the chalk. <laughs> that would be make me very mad. Yeah, yeah, Kathleen. Um, I don't, I, mine, like right now, my regular stitch length, it's like two and a half. And when I go down, it's actually really hard to turn my dial when I go down low. I go to like a two or one point three, one and three quarters. I don't know what that is, <laughs> but that's what it is on my machine. It's just, you know, it goes zero to four. That's my options. So, um, I can't even imagine cranking it down to the zero. Never done that before. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else can I do over there? Turn the well iron, press the lower box seam opening, pull the well. Okay. We can stitch our, or we can do our, um, accordion fold as well. Oh, let's like make sure, always make sure on this, the, on both sides that you're cutting actually went through all the layers on both sides. This one, I could go a little bit closer and I'm not cutting the outer layer at this point. I'm just st sticking my scissors in there and just picking up these. When it's really thick, it's hard to be accurate top to bottom. You're going to have to double check. So, all right, let's bring these over. My pattern is the archer. <laughs> I checked chat. <laughs> this is one of the many archers I've made <clears throat> by Green Line. Yeah. I love this moment when you pull the thing through. One of the interesting things I learned when I did the buttonholes SBS skill building session was the, um, and Barbara told me about this one. She said the Spanish snap. And I was like, the Spanish snap? What is that? And um, it's basically like a faced buttonhole but when you do this part, when you pull it through, you're supposed to go snap and it makes, it makes a little noise like that. And it kind of does, it kind of makes like a, like when you like snap a sheet like that. When cutting the well opening on thick fabric, would you cut from the right side or wrong side making the main? I do both Shem and you know what you can do is once you make that big long cut, I will separate the layers out, especially on thick fabrics. And then I do from one side, I do those, I flip it over and then I pick up the other layers and I do those. This week, Michelle, isn't it cool? It's got a water bottle hanging basically above me. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna press this seam open a little bit. This is like when you're doing French seams, how you need to press the seam sort of open and or, or at least to one side that you'll get a crisper fold along the edge here once you do it, you know, like once you do the final thing here. 
I actually just am worried about those with my iron, so. But my hand is touching this right here. That's hot. I don't have big hands either. It, it does stay on, but I turn it off when I'm not using it. All right, so we want this one to stay open. All right. And then now we're gonna do the, um, well here, let's just press this opening a little bit and get this rectangle the way we want it. Right, this is our ch one of our chances to kind of manipulate this rectangle to exactly what we want. Take a peek at it from this side. All right. And so now, I'm trying to get, the belt really makes things kind of wobbly, you know? All right, and so now we want a half inch line here. Well, let's, let's do the scoring again. I'm gonna try and do it from the wrong side this time and see if that works better. Yeah, see, that worked a lot better. I have this little fold line there. I love that thing. <laughs> I got so many messages about uh, the Trico I was using yesterday, and I, sh I don't know why I didn't mention what it was. But um, I know that, um, and people message me, and they're like, what was the interfacing you were using? And just so you all know, it was the three inch wide roll of Trico fusible interfacing from Waywack. so. It can really eat up a room, oh my. Yeah, it is really easy to set up. I, so I mounted mine to my table right here, that's what that is. Oh, dang Elena. What about sandbags? Pinto beans? <laughs> Get this little corner a little nicer right here. Can you see it right here? I find that this is, you know how you guys were talking about that little technique you like to use on um, darts to even out thicknesses? I think this is another area where there's probably some really great fine tuning techniques in couture sewing and just really fine tailoring because sometimes this little bump right here especially the triangle will show through on the right side and I'm not a big fan of that. It can hang, it can hang on the ceiling, but it's kind of hard to, yeah, you'd have to get up on the ladder to refill it. No sand. Oh, hmm. Yeah, that's a tough one to mail order. <laughs> You have so many a <laughs> priority. I feel like it's a very underrated um, thing that we don't know about Elena's act. She's actually a gadget gal, like Nancy. <laughs> Nancy gets the, the reputation for it, but I'm pretty sure Elena is too. <laughs> All right, where am I at? Secure the ends. Um, and then um, I'm gonna um, stitch in the ditch too. From a, first I'm gonna stitch in the ditch right here of the bottom seam to secure it. It's a heavy box. <laughs> I remember one day I was like, Michael, oh, you're going to the hardware store? He's like, yeah, you need anything? I'm like, yeah, I need a bag of sand. I need some more finishing sand for the path I had made. <laughs> and inside I was kind of chuckling to myself like, <laughs> I don't have to pick that up. <laughs> All right, so from the right side, I'm gonna flip this up like this and then flip back the lining and we're gonna secure this. Now this is like, this is that opportunity to kind of, you know, write any angle wrongs that you may have going on here and also don't create one because um, that, that that's what I would do on accident, right? 
So we're just gonna stitch right next to that seam. And we're just doing it, you know, right there on those, the, where the triangles are. We're only doing it on the welt pieces there. Uh-oh, Terry. <laughs> Bought. If she, if she can't take care of it, I can. So like this one right here is a little angled. So I'm gonna make sure it doesn't make it worse. Oh, okay, you got it. Okay, thanks, Terry. I was about to do it for you. All right. I'm just gonna give this one like a little tug right there to make sure that I don't let that corner collapse in a little bit because that's what it kind of felt like it wanted to do. And when I sew this right here, I'm kind of going just before the end of the triangle. So here's the end of the triangle right here. I'm stitching right here to right here. Ooh, what kind of cake? A <laughs> Christmas tree skirt, yeah, that would be fun. I like that idea. I used pipe. I went to the store, I spent $30 on pipe and mounted it to the table because I can't have mine on in the middle or anywhere but the middle of the room. Oh yeah, that works, Elena. You've got irons, sounds sounds good. Yeah, we're all going <laughs> to Terry's house. I want cake too. <laughs> okay, uh, where are we at? Secure ends, we're there. We're already flipping this. This one's going so much faster even though I'm talking a little too much probably for many people's preference. Stitch well to the lining. Okay, now we're gonna secure the lining here to the welt, the, these little ends here, right? So fold your pant out of the way. Make sure you had, you moved your stitch length back up. Doesn't need to be short. All right, and then I'll do the top one. Keep this edge straight too. You see how it wants to pull in? Try and keep it straight. This one's gonna, like this one feels like I'm sewing through mud and it's because one side of my presser foot is hung up on the seam allowance of that welt. You know what I mean? Doesn't like that uneven thickness. Oh, vanilla pound cake. Oh, so versatile. A jug on the ground, a flooded room. Oh. Yeah, that's how I feel about my pant form over there. It's a little top heavy. I know what you mean. So right now, this is when I think you should do your button and buttonhole. At least do your buttonhole right now because you can put the buttonhole on through the pant like this. They tell you to do this when the pocket lining is done and that sounds kind of hard to me. I, there might be a reason to do it that way, but um, if you wanna do a buttonhole and button here, this is the moment to do it when none of that is sewn, okay? All right, so now we're going to finish the lining side. Fold up lining wrong sides together, finish sides, secure top of well, folding pant away. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that was a lot faster, A. Eh? All right, so I put this right sides together. So this is the only thing I do differently from the instructions is, is this is what they would have you do is fold this wrong sides together and then stitch these long edges here and finish the edge however works for you, a serger or zigzag. You could bind it even. I'm always a fan of that, right? Um, I would do that, but I didn't pre-wash extra, so. All right, so we're gonna put this right sides together so it looks nice and clean in there. And I just do a quarter inch seam here. Trying to keep things kind of lined up so they don't get, they don't pull my pocket at all, you know? All right, then turn this one right side out. And then you're gonna do this one here. Uh, it's always awkward. 
<laughs> Why can't I figure it out? <laughs> What, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh my goodness, I just made that so hard. <laughs> okay, pull the pant all the way up and then you can do it. <laughs> you can keep it inside out too. Getting lost in the sauce. All right, now we can turn our pocket right side out. And then um, after this, I think we're gonna do the front pockets. It's a pocket kind of day. Yep, we're gonna do the front pockets and the center back rise. All right, let's press it and then I'm gonna um, do that stitching. Pull the seam over. Get it right on that edge there. This lining is pretty lightweight. So it makes it pretty easy. It's not incredibly stable, the lining, because it is kind of a linen-y type of fabric, but um, it's not too bad, you know? It's not like a slippery pocket lining. Okay, um, and let's just press this whole thing because we're about to stitch the last bit of that pocket at the top there. Remember, don't forget to do that if you're already skipping ahead. Yeah, that feels very boingy right there. Oh, I forgot to switch camera. I did press the button. Sorry. I pressed it, it didn't register, sorry about that. All I did right now um, is press these sides here. Where does the button and buttonhole go? Well, have you ever seen like the back of a pair of chinos and then there the pocket buttons closed? That's what I was talking about. I don't know how you guys don't get triggered by that little sliver of like dark showing right here. <laughs> so then the button goes on the inside of the pocket, Donna, and the buttonhole goes on the, the pant. You wanna see that iron again? <laughs> exactly. You guys just want that, the iron the iron stream. All right, so I'm gonna stitch down the top of this pocket here. Let's, let's kind of just make sure this is all like closing, you know, like don't do this, right? You don't want to stitch it permanently with a big wide mouth frog, right? You kind of want to like, this is your opportunity to kind of zhuzh, zhuzh it into where you want it, all right? And then we'll stitch it down. I feel a little bit like a chicken to, uh, to, uh, to uh, stitch right there in the seam. So I'm going right above it. And then there, that, now that's nice and secure. Um, I kind of want to stitch right here to kind of calm that down, but I just did with that, so that's okay. All right, I think I got everything. Yeah. Secure lining to, oh, you, we could also stitch the lining to the waist up here if you want. Like this. 
I'm gonna try and get it relaxed. It mine's not lining up perfectly, so I'm not gonna force it. There's a huge seam allowance, we'll be fine. It'll all get in there and there we go. Yeah, so for the button and the buttonhole, you'd put your buttonhole right here or in your welt right there and then the button goes on the underside. So, okay, let's do the center back rise seam. And um, I was actually gonna get your guys' opinion. Like, I, I'm kind of thinking of I think I want to French seam the back rise. But on my side seams, I'm gonna press those open. Something I haven't done in a long time. Let's press my side seams open, you know. I'm just gonna to top stitch this to the waist up here. It's a really long pocket bag. Like I was explaining before, Terry, it's because it's a high waist pant and the, there's no waistband. So it's including that waistband height as well, you know? It makes sense. But when I know when I saw the pattern piece, I was like, oh, <laughs> this thing's really big. I don't have enough fabric. I had to piece together my fabric in order to get it to work. All right, there we go. Put this in the pocket, you know? Get that out of the way. It's so heavy. We're already like um, two hours in. Ooh, do you want me to wait? to um, do the front pockets. You guys, are you guys down to stay? <laughs> it seems kind of long. Oops. It's always a closet core pattern that makes me stream for eight hours. All right, let's move these pieces underneath. Oh, we have our um, back rise. Secret pocket. <laughs> I saw your secret pocket comment. What do you guys think? Do you think French seam is okay for a back rise? I just think like um, I would be happier with it being really finished without it being an overlock. And I, I really want the double stitching, you know? Okay, Raquel, <laughs> you're here for it. All right, cool. It's kind of nice if we could get through the front pockets, maybe even that pleat detail but I might save that for Saturday so we can just kind of start with that. I'm trying not to stretch out my rise right now, so I'm kind of scrunching it together. I don't want to stretch it out. I don't need my butt to be saggy before I put my butt in there, you know? All right, let's trim this and then we'll press it. There we go, thanks. This is kind of a problem on this shirt. That better? You can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah, you can hear me. I know, right, Ray? Exactly. Okay, there's the iron. All 
All right, so. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, we'll press our French seam here. Boop. That linen setting though, right? So good. Iron table. <laughs> Sorry about that. I pressed the button. Okay. Very carefully. They um, suggest that you double stitch your center back rise just for some added security because this is quite a big long rise and um, you can, you know, get a little bit of stretching happening and rises sometimes also split for people. So you um, might want to double or triple stitch it. If it's triple stitch, if you're not finishing the edge. Yeah, it's a, a meaty project, huh, Elena? I do. I felt like I had a little extra sticking in the seam, out of the seam. Yeah, I'm so glad I did that because the linen is so loosey goosey, you know, and then the French seam just feels so secure. These look nice. That's the inside. Really long pockets. <laughs> the pocket facing will cover it up too. These are so, oh, it's the, I was like, why are these so, the belts in there? Oh, totally, Elena. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. All right, so let's put these aside. The backs are now done. And we will start on the front pockets here. And we're also gonna finish up this little belt detail. Five eighths, Raquel, yeah. Have you seen Elena's little um, synopsis of her makes, Terry? I feel like you would appreciate that. Because she does, she breaks everything down. I really, I'm always talking about them, Elena. Sorry, I'm always putting you on the spot for it. But they're just so interesting. <laughs> okay, so let's put... The D rings on the little belt here. And I'm going to sew as close as I can. Plus a little bit further away. And then trim my thread here. Back stitch, same thing with this one. Yeah, those spreadsheets are just good. This is why I'm cinching it up because see how that spun around in there? I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of D rings. I tried to use stash items for this project, except for the main fabric I used, um, something I bought recently. If I were to make these and pick whatever I wanted for the closure, I'd probably pick something like a three bar slider and you can get them, you can get them at pretty sure at Hearts Fabric or Noodle Head. They, she has nice ones. I only had one though. And a three bar slider is basically like three bars, you know, it's like a square and there's like the outer, you know, the outer perimeter and then the bar in the middle, like a belt buckle, right? And then um, that way you would secure the, this little guy to the middle of the um, three bars 
and then the um, belt goes through like a like a belt, you know. Those aren't going to be as fussy. Yeah, these are washable. They're gonna bang around though. Wow, Elena, that's amazing. <laughs> you don't know what you're looking for either. Okay, so this is a really interesting um, pocket construction. So first we're going to, we need to attach the um, belt, right? Uh, does it point this way, Elena? It points this way, right? Uh, this is like an uh, overall strap. I can show you one. I have one. I have one. Well, I have a bunch, but I only had one that would have worked for this project. I'll show you. You could also use loop locks. This is the other option. If you can't find a three bar slider, loop locks, which are, are see it's a, a squished D ring. These are also a really good option because they're not going to get the, the, um, the flipping around of a D ring. And then something like this. And then you would, you would attach the belt with just through the middle here like this. I don't have enough belt like this, right? And then the belt on your pant, back pant goes through that to cinch it, right? But I only had, I felt like one of these two would have worked color wise. These were too big. You want something a little closer. This would have been a little too narrow to fit the fabric holding the three, the third, the middle bar plus the fabric going through. Like this would have actually been okay, but this one would have been a little narrow. That's about right. The hardware should point towards the side seam. Right. That makes sense. <laughs> These are all three bar sliders, so we, you know, three bar sliders are belt buckles. That's what they look like. This one actually was a belt buckle. You can see the divot there. And I just removed the other part. Me either. Exactly, Libby. Yeah. But I only have, you, you need enough for two belts. So you need a lot. <laughs> and with a three bar slider, you would need two three bar sliders or you would need four loop locks or 4D rings. Those are your mostly your options. If you don't have any hardware, you can just make this into a loop and then loop your belt through it. And then you'd be like kind of, you know, tying it and snugging it and it would be a little wrinkly and chunky, but it might be really cute too, you know? All right, so we attach the pocket first to the, um, right? Right, just here, here, oh, 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 oh. Wow, you've done a lot more since last year, Elena. That's huge. Okay, yeah, so we're gonna finish our edges here. Let me use my overlock again. And let me look at this opening here. Like this, right? Yeah, okay, so on this piece here, there's a notch on one of these short ends, not on this one, but on, oh wait, that has both, wait, there's a notch on both of these. Okay, well, it's gonna be this bottom edge. <laughs> The one that lines up to your pocket opening. See how it lines up there? Like this. We're gonna overlock this edge here. All right, I'm trying to keep them straight. Also zigzag. If you don't want to do either of those, you could um, 
fold under this edge and edge stitch it down. I like that look, personally I like that look better. Come here, press her foot, her foot pedal. Ooh, Elena, dang, you have less. You said, wait, okay. You were over 600 hours. Oh, you've done, yeah, not 2,000 hours, 200 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. You have less. That's crazy. Why do you think that is? Do you feel like you're faster now? Do you think you were at this same number at this time of year last year? Make sure you get a left and a right. You know what I mean, jelly beans? Oh, like in your bin, Kathleen? Awesome. It does make it, it I feel like um, we're so eager to get to the sewing and I am too, but when I do that, I am so much like faster. And it also gives me that chance to kind of look things over make sure I have everything. <laughs> Cause uh, you know, sometimes I don't. <laughs> you like it, Ray? I think that, yeah, it's kind of a fun touch. Weirdly, I don't have four cones of thread that really match this linen. <laughs> I had some tan, but not quite the same. All right, so now we're gonna attach our facings to these pieces here. And when you do this, you're going to, um, you're going to stop five eighths of an inch away. I was trying to figure out right side, wrong side again too. Right side of the lining is meant to be seen. For that reason, please know that the wrong side of the lining will be inside the final pocket so you can enjoy the right side. So wrong sides together, position the pocket facing. Okay, thank you for saying that, Closet Core. I really appreciate it because I was gonna get all confused with right side, wrong side again. So we're just gonna edge stitch this piece onto the pocket. And this one, we're gonna go all the way through. I'm just having to stretch out my serger edge to match. Meaning we're not gonna stop five eighths. We're gonna go the whole length there. Now let's do this side too. Oh, 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 very interesting, Elena. That does make a big impact. Okay, and now we're gonna do the same on these pieces. Oh, thanks, Terry. Oh, that's true, Elena. Uh, oh my gosh, I was a little turned around there. You count every finished. How often would you guys say you don't finish a project? And I mean like never, you're never gonna finish it. I don't mean like, okay, I haven't finished that, but I plan to finish it. It's just in the naughty pile. How often do you think that happens to you guys? I'm trying to think. Um, when was the last time I, I just didn't finish something? You know, whoops, I, I know I have pins in here. <laughs> it 
several times, once a year, never super rare, rarely, never finish everything. You always finish. That's interesting. Even if, like, do you guys finish something even if you're like, okay, I'm not okay with this. I'm not going to wear it, but I'm going to finish it and donate it or give it to someone. Do you even finish those? I <laughs> wadded and walked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wadded and walked. I want to, I want a label that says that. But what would you put that in? <laughs> Once a year, you did not finish a crochet project and sat for four. Oh yeah, Danny. Yeah, I feel like that happens in knitting a little more for me. Donate, mm-hmm. Very interesting, yeah. All right, so we have our two pockets here and we have our belt here and it gets the, the hardware points to the side seam. And I'm going to see what the positioning is here. Oh, we don't have to put this on quite yet. We put this on right before we do that. Oh, good, good, good. Oh, good, good, good. I was just thinking I did this wrong, but I didn't do it wrong. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, quilt, ooh, that's a big one. Yeah, Elena, yeah, I put them in my go bag. Although I'm trying to be good about not putting only things I don't like in my go bag. Finishing is your weak spot. You have a lot to say, I'm trying to keep up the chat here. At least with knitting, you can frog it and you get the yarn back. Sewing isn't as forgiving. <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel that, Shim. Yeah, it just becomes something else. You know, outstanding Mandy boat tee with non fabrics to make the. Oh. Could it be a tank top? It's probably too big of an armhole, huh, Mary? Yeah. That is uh, such a bummer when it's like. You buy the fabric and then you maybe didn't know what you were going to make with it when you bought the fabric. I've almost gotten into that pickle so many times with the stream. I'm always like, woohoo, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, you know, sew this. And then it turns out that I just did not have the right fabric and I've already committed. So, oh, wow. Wow, Karen, you don't knit pants. <laughs> Not even babies. <laughs> All right, so we're going to put this right sides together. You know, this is our um, right side here. And we're going to um, only go up to 5 eighths of an inch from the edge here. So I'm actually going to mark this since the seam allowance is so big that I will definitely lose track of that part. But there is a dot on the pattern. So we'll just find this intersection here. I think it's right there. Okay. I can tell this is going to hang a little funny, so I'm going to pull this over and then fix that edge there. And that's because I graded between sizes. So I have a little bit sticking up there because I want that to be flush with the side seam there. All right, and then um, we itch stitch it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna press the seam allowance towards the pocket, under stitch the facing, an art gallery fabric, aw. Oh yeah, Lena, yeah. Especially with knitting that happens. Gold foil, please say on your dress room at the moment. I own for three years. <laughs> you hate it. Oh man. 
Um, we're supposed to, oh, so I, um, if you want to do something to prevent your pocket from gaping, like using twill tape, you can do that and you can sew it in the seam here. I interfaced my pocket facing this right here to stabilize. That was my solution. And I'm also going to make sure I don't stretch this pocket opening out while I'm handling it. Understitching it's going to help a little too. There we go. So let's do our other one now. Let's make sure we get a left pant and a right pant. Oh, that's awesome, Aisha. That's such a good feeling, isn't it? Exactly, one less thing. Okay. Line that up. So remember how I said with my, like within the grading video, you might get a little bit of like angle things there. This is why I say you have so much seam allowance. You can just line these up and then we'll pick our battles there. Smooth out those little rough corners. And let's find our 5 8 5 8 This is so interesting how they do this, this pocket here where they leave this open. I was like, what is happening here? <laughs> kind of trip are you taking me on closet core? <laughs> Press that seam towards the pocket and then we're going to understitch it. Stop, remember to stop at that spot right there, right? You need to leave that. All right, now we're going to put our pockets together and make sure the pockets together, right? Right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, and then now we're going to be able to um, go past this little thing here. So could I, can I do this so that my, <laughs> so that my, my pocket will be French seamed? You know? Hmm, this is the wrong pocket. So, this is, so if you get a little turned around, just check it. So this is my pant is upside down. See, there's the fly right there. And you want this little facing to show to the right side, right? So that is how you double check right now, right? So you'd put these right sides together because we're considering the wrong side of the pocket lining the right side in this case. Um, and I'm pretty sure I actually could do a French seam here. Right, so I'm gonna um, do this as a French seam. And we'll learn what the ramifications are with on mine, okay? I'm always willing to sacrifice for the cause. And I love an experiment. Oh, here we go. I'm like, what's going on here? So when you get up here, you're gonna put that seam allowance, see that down like that, open all that up. Right? Hope so. <laughs> Yeah, okay. And then now I'm going to turn it the other way and we'll press it first. So we'll do both of them before we press it. And then we'll finish that seam and then we'll enclose this. See that? We're gonna get really close to that juncture right there, enclosing that seam, okay? All right, so um, let me do this one and then we'll finish the pocket. Let me make sure I'm not gonna get this is all gonna get enclosed. Okay, I think we're gonna be okay. Famous last words, right? All right, so let's put this. 
together. I should have secured my pocket all the way around, you know. All right, my pocket facing all the way around. <laughs> okay. Well, I kind of like doing this with the other pocket up, but I like starting from the bottom, you know. Let's see if we can get this opened up. All right, and now we're going to turn it and iron it. Oh, they, they don't accept things that, with a size tag. Oh, that's interesting. You can buy size tags or steal them from another garment. That's good to know. I never thought about that because I do have like brand new things I've sewn that I, I've thought about donating that are actually decent garments. Like they're not like junk or anything. There's nothing wrong with them. Okay, just getting this little curved seam here. I could have popped my iron inside the pocket and kind of pushed the seam out and pressed it a little bit, uh, but it, it's so tricky, you know? And I'm not as adept with this iron quite yet, so I'm not gonna take that chance. I don't think I'd really get that much in there. I'm going to kind of fold this one back here and get that like that. Let's just see how it's looking. Let's just fold it out, you know, kind of curious. Oh, that's smart, Noemi. <laughs> There's so much to salvage from things sometimes, you know? I'm just opening or pressing this opening right here. Okay. Let's do this one. There is a chance doing a fringe seam is not going to be the choice here because of this pleat. But I think it's all going to get enclosed. Oh, yeah, that's just terrible, Raquel. Exactly. I try not to donate pretty much anything. I try and use it somehow even if i salvage it for stuff um i think like the last time i got rid of a whole garment it was so parted out like i got rid of so many things on it like i took the zipper i took everything off of it i cut off as much fabric as i could because you can cut off certain details and then use the fabric for other things you know and then i just put the unused unusable stuff in my mulch mats <laughs> Which I totally stand behind. I just love those things. They've really made a good impact in my yard with all my fabric scraps and stuff. Let me make sure I'm getting this. Like, is this is how it's gonna lay? Am I thinking about this correctly here? Um, like this. I think that'll be okay because this is going to go like this. Okay, I'm just making sure. Mm 
Yep, it's a business, and um, if people can't don't know, they won't buy. And that's how they organize the store by size and color, right? Yeah. I think, Karen, they're just so exhausted by that, and it's so common that people donate junk, you know? And, you know, can you imagine, like, the person on the curb going, I'm sorry, that that's not good enough to donate? It would make... Some people will get really mad. Because there's a lot of attitude, uh, a lot of a common attitude for people donating is, well, they'll be thankful to get anything. But that's not, you know, <laughs> the right um, spirit of donating, right? Because sometimes someone's looking for professional attire for a one-off thing, you know? <laughs> or maybe they can't afford to buy something new. They're going to be thankful to have stuff that's actually good, <laughs> you know? And I just know this from, like, when the fire happened here and people were donating things, it really was that kind of, like, well, they'll be thankful to have anything. They lost everything. And that's not really... Like when you've been through a tragedy like that and you've lost everything, you aren't going to feel that great walking around in junk, <laughs> wearing junk, you know? So, so I just think it's like that whole thing, like if you back it all the way out, they want to accept all donations because they don't want to deter anybody from donating things. They want as much as possible, but they also probably get a lot of stuff they can't use. Yeah, exactly. Only donate things you would use. And and have you ever gotten projects from people and like uh, like someone who's like not sewing or knitting and they're like, oh, hey, I never finished this, but it, it'd be awesome, you know, if someone finished it. So here you go. And you're like, I don't want your half done project. If it's so awesome, why didn't you finish it? You know? Okay, so I just want to reiterate. So if you were just doing this seam without doing the French seam, you would do this um, right sides together, which in this case is the wrong side of your pocket lining is the right side. And when you go around, you're going to go right up to the top of that seam where the pocket opening, where we stopped at that 5 eighths inch mark where the, the circle is right there. So you're going to enclose that. And then you're, you're going to have some raw edges up here at the top, but those are going to get taken care of in the, the cool pleat we're going to do next time. So, so we'll do the pleat and the belt. We'll start off with those and then we'll go right into the fly next time. And then the facings and then we're done. So these would go really fast without the, um, well, back welt pockets. I just lost a pin in my pocket. I was like, whoa, there's a pin in there. That's how it looks on the inside, by the way. So I think I like that clean look. It's less bulky too, you know? Oh yeah, I should exactly. Yeah, exactly, Terry. All right, well, on that note, <laughs> thanks for coming today. Um, got our backs done and our welt pockets. They turned out really nice. Uh, we'll do the belt and the pleat. Very easy to do. It looks a little tricky. The directions are very sparse, but it really, they work. Like what they tell you to do, it just works. Um, but I noticed that when I did my prototype for fitting, that even though I was really careful, I still, one of the pleats got a little wonky. So I'm gonna make sure that I kind of identify what made that happen so that we can prevent that from happening on our, our real pants, right? So I'll see you guys Saturday. I'll be here 11 a.m. Pacific finishing these up and maybe I'll even throw them on to try them on, but I'll definitely post a picture of me wearing them later that day, uh, if anything, because I'm pretty excited to see these in the, the, all their full-legged glory. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly, Ray. Did I really? That's awesome. I 
I'm so glad to hear that, Libby. Thanks. Yay. Um, yeah, hopefully it's a concise enough so long. I did chat a bit, but you know, it's free, people. Unless you would like to become a member of my channel and you can get really cool emotes. Let me do a little advertisement. You can use this one when I'm ripping something out. Nobody used emotes today, but all these people with green names and stars by the name, they are channel members. They support the stream. You can do it for $1.99 a month and you get all these cool little emotes for free. Well, you don't get them for free. You get them for whatever you pay for. <laughs> Absolutely, Karen. Hi, Andrea. Thanks for coming. Yeah, and um, if you also like chatting with other people about sewing and nothing else, just sewing, 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 or you like just like being able to ask people questions, check out the guild, sosoguild.com. It's free to join. There are paid tiers in there, but you are part of the whole community when you do the free level, and it is really a great place. Everyone's really amazing in there. So we use them today, yeah. Yeah, Shim was on it with that guild one. Woo woo, you love advertising. I'm watching a streamer and he has his whole little thing down pat so well. I'm like, I need to do that. I love it. I actually think it's like he has a really good way to do it. So, <laughs> yep. Yeah, like this one here. If I'm doing an experiment, you can put this one in the chat. Do you guys want to see them big? They're really cute, really big. Hopefully um, it's on here still. Me and computer? No. Image camera. Here we go. That's them. Can you still hear me? Um, I don't know if you can. Yeah, you can still hear me, I think. So these are all the emotes, left to right. It's rip with the seam ripper. Then there's the experiment. Uh, the pug is if I'm on a tangent. Lurk if you're just like hanging out listening. Watermelon love forever, which is just a heart. All love forever. And then the guild. So that's everything. All right. <laughs> where's my where's my machine? There it is. Cool. Yeah, join the guild. It's really great. It really is, I promise. It, it really is, it's just, it's just, it's very cool in there. It's a beautiful place. And um, if you're sick of Instagram and ads and data mining and all that, check it out, you never know. All right, I'll see you guys Saturday. Thanks for coming. And um, I really appreciate all the likes and comments. It's really keeps me going. I'll see you soon, bye.